Hello everybody and you're very welcome back to the channel. So yes, we're back at Zetter. We're going to pick up from where we left off um, on our last video. So anyone that hasn't seen the part one of the Zetter, it dealt with uh, the formation of the company basically right through up until the 90s. So we were looking at the famous Zetter crystal and the, the different models throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s that made them famous, especially in Ireland and England. Um, and that was a very, very popular video, over 17,000 views on it. Um, so this is a follow up to that. It's not going to be as long. It's not going to be as in depth. We're just going to take a look at the changes that happened in the company and um, the new models that came on stream. Uh, we're going to talk about the new models and where the company actually sits now um, as regards its dealerships and its, its uh, you know, its, its hold on the on the Irish agricultural uh, market at the minute, um, which, is, which is quite strong. They, they have a strong hold, especially um, in the west of Ireland. It seems there is quite a lot of them um, down towards the south. I know down in County Clare and down in Cork and Kerry, there is quite a lot of uh, Zephyr machines still driving around and there are a lot in the east as well maybe just not as much because you have a different scale of farming towards say Carlow, Wexford, Mead, Loud where you have bigger tillage farms and the bigger manufacturers the John Deere's and the Massey Ferguson's and Case kind of rule over that there but uh, yeah we're going to be taking a look at the Zephyr company um, from say you know the 90s onwards so yeah just um, videos upcoming that I have coming up over the next couple of months um, so I've got another massive Ferguson one that's in the pipeline at the minute I've got a follow-up on our Ford so from our Fordson uh, video another very very popular video I've got um, a follow-up on that uh, that's in the pipeline at the minute the Ford one um, also the international um, follow-up on the international so the worldwide international video a difficult enough video to make it very hard to get some really good information on it to make a good good long video i have a lot of stuff if anybody has anything else that they'd like to share um that i could add to that video i just don't want to put it out until i have a nice uh, a nice decent amount of uh, material to share which is um just struggling to get a lot of stuff um, i have emailed off a couple of people waiting to hear back so if anybody has anything if you've worked for international around the time you have anything that you could share feel free to, to throw it my way um i've got a video that's in the pipeline on a completely new model that i haven't touched well i might have touched it touched on it in in one of my top 10 videos um so a huge company uh, i have a video on that uh, i'm also have a video coming up on combine harvesters and their development down through the years uh with the harvest coming up i just says i throw in something different uh, combines would be a strong point of mine uh so i have something on combines coming up um to everyone who has subscribed after last week's video to everybody everybody that watched last week's video on the famous sammy uh thank you very much everyone that got in contact um everyone that uh commented liked and shared the video uh and there's over 100 new subscribers since that video went out so thank you very much uh to everybody who watched and commented um also uh an update on our massey ferguson 135 project the cab was all sprayed all all the red everything on the cab was sprayed the mud guards are sprayed we're rooting through wire and stuff at the minute the cab and the mud guards and that are going on next weekend they will be going on next weekend so anyone that has been following um massey dave he's been doing the 135 um so we have a similar or similar as the scirocco cab with the flexi uh the flexi cab uh to go on to our one so it will take a little there will be a little bit of work getting it on lining it up getting everything right uh um so um that's next weekend i will i do hope to have a video coming up on that that tractor will be finished very very soon um one thing i do want for it, so anybody out there in massey ferguson world any of my viewers anyone that's involved with Massey Ferguson, I know there, there's a lot of you out there. Uh, we are looking for an original front weight carrier for the 165. So if anybody has an original one uh, weight carrier for a 165, I'd very much appreciate if you get in contact. Um, there, there wasn't one on this tractor. There was a, a, a bull bar on the front that we do plan on putting on, but I want to incorporate it into, into a weight carrier. There was never any proper weight carrier on it. Um, but I do want a weight carrier. I know you can you can buy them new you can buy them new but they're not the same thickness as the uh, the originals the the spurious ones aren't the same thickness they're just not the same and from some reports that I've heard they can be quite difficult to fit and need to be ground out but I do want an original one if anyone has one lying at the back of a hedge or has one on the front of a tractor that's been scrapped or something I would very much appreciate if you could uh, get in contact with me um 
also just on the project 165 the tractor is nearly finished so we, we are looking for another project tractor so i have been kind of scouring around looking for something suitable um for say the autumn coming into the winter and now we're working on our new workshop at home we're getting it cleared out we're getting a new floor put in it uh, we're going to you know greatly increase our capacity of what we can do at home um and i do plan on doing a lot more videos mechanical videos going forward over the next couple of years um rebuilds of say multi-power systems and stuff like that clutch packs fuel pumps uh starters alternators that kind of stuff i do plan on incorporating that kind of stuff um for the older tractors so all you people who collect uh say older tractors your massey ferguson's your fords your fordsons um david brown's stuff like that so ideally you know if anybody has a 100 or 200 series tractor that they might want to sell that needs to be um stripped down and overhauled now the engine could be gone with it, i don't care uh, it could be a wreck um i don't mind you know we will consider everything um so a massey ferguson or a 30 40 or 50 series john deere from the 70s and 80s that's my preferred so if anybody has one of those that they might want to part with uh i am on the lookout for one so uh please keep me in mind uh so having said all that we're going to get into today's video um on the zetter so when we look at zetter the turn of the millennium was a period of significant change for the zetter brand it could have disappeared because the state-owned enterprise faced bankruptcy in june 2002 hcc holdings of slovakia became the owner of zetter at that stage the new owners invested money and to stabilize and restructure the enterprise so the models going forward for zetter um so they start they produce or they do produce uh six models and i know i do know they have a new model in you know coming on stream i think it's called the series six something like that and there's no pictures of it yet there is some intro videos and that that i've seen so when you look at they have the the utilics the hortus the major the proxima the frontera and of course the the crystal that they have um so that's the range they have at the minute and they have looking at their website and a few other places they have um this new new series six tractor coming online it's going to be up to 171 horsepower four cylinder um so high horsepower in a small package by the looks of it um so when you look at the utilics and utilics yeah and the hortus range so the utilics and the hortus lineups were introduced in the first quarter of 2018 so the new tractors were small and light equipped with four cylinder engines and power outputs of between 43 and 67 horsepower so small utility tractors for landscapers and for small holdings um looking then at the, the zetter major uh the zetter major was launched i think it was around the early 2000s so maybe 2001 2002 that was a simple tractor with a power output of 80 horsepower or 60 kilowatts uh, and it was appreciated for its reliability and low operating costs in 19 or sorry in 2015 the major range was extended by a new type of major 60 it was called so the power, the power output uh, of 61 horsepower so in late 2016 the company launched the new major hs which offered higher comfort while retaining low operational costs tractors of the major range included in uh, you know at the medium power range class are appreciated for their ease of operation and for their ease of servicing and as always if you have any of these models if you have any of these newer tractors these newer zetters um now i know very little about them i would have worked on the older ones a lot more and driven the older ones a lot more but these newer zetters i really i would be shy in them so if anyone has one if they've driven one if you're a dealer if you're a mechanic in a zetter dealership around the country or in the uk or anywhere really um please uh, feel free to drop a comment and let us know what you think about them so then you have the zetter the the proxima so the proxima range entered the market in 2004 and it's a universal farming tractor employing the zetter four cylinder engine uh, they could be used in conjunction with farming machines, the industrial adapters, and in farming transport. They were mostly used in farming, forestry, and community service. Uh, Zetter manufactured three types of the Proxima, so the Proxima CL, the Proxima uh, GP, and the Proxima HS, with power outputs ranging from 80 to 120 horsepower, with a range of transmissions. They also offered creeper gears in the CL model, um, up to three-stage power shift or a power shuttle. So then another model then, that was very power is very popular in ireland so the zetter frontera 
uh, the Zeta Frontera range was uh, introduced and it's a robust tractor well equipped with a four cylinder uh, Zeta engine uh, which was suitable for heavy duty work in farming and forestry. The first models entered the market in 2008. In 2012, the range was extended by the Frontera HSX uh, with 3030 transmission and electro-hydraulic reverser. In 2014, the range was extended by the Frontera HD with a power output of 147 horsepower and electronic um, hydraulic regulation as is in most tractors these days. <coughs> Um, so that was the famous Frontier range, and there are a lot of them out there, in, uh, especially across Ireland. The Frontier is a very, very um, popular machine, um, mainly because they're, uh, they're, they're economical, they're easy to service, they're easy to, to work on, they're easy to drive. Pretty much anyone can get up and drive in them. Uh, they're, they're controls. You know, from what I can see, I've never driven a Frontier, but they are. They seem to be a very simple machine, um, and of course, you know, price is a huge point, especially for, uh, you know, stockmen uh, that wouldn't be using them every day, that wouldn't be under high demand, you know, as regards to somebody in the tillage or, you know, contractor maybe cutting silage or something, that they wouldn't be under huge strain, uh, that they are a good, reliable machine for what they are designed to do. Moving on then, of course, we have the famous uh, Zetter Crystal, um, now very different machine than it was in the 70s and the 80s. But the Zetter Crystal, for a long time, Zetter did not produce a powerful six cylinder tractor. Uh, one was launched, of course, in 2015 when the unveiling of the new Zetter Crystal uh, was launched. The name Crystal refers to the legendary tractors produced by Zetter from 1969 right up to the 1980s. In that period, over 45,000 Crystal tractors were sold. The new Crystal, of course, was equipped with a six cylinder engine having a power output from 144 to 163 horsepower. The engines um, have uh, 24 valves, so they're six cylinder, 24 valve, um, multi, sorry, sorry, I'll start that again. So the engines are 24 valve uh, and they have common rail fuel injection. The operation of the tractor was made easier by a three stage power shift, power shuttle and power clutch with a clutch button incorporated in the gear shifting lever, which of course is very easy when you're for handy for when you're doing shuttle work, going forward and back if you've got a loader on board. Um, clutch shifting on a button is is you know it's it's a great uh, advantage. So looking at the branding of the tractors, then so the branding of Zeta tractors, the Unified series used new coatings. So the first or three numbers of the marking of the tractor related to the approximate power of the engine in horsepower. So e.g. 72, 80, 121 and 162. The next two numbers denoted the powered axles. So 7211 Zetter with approximate power of 72 horsepower and four wheel drive. So a 45 denotation then of course was the four wheel drive and 16 denotation was the semi caterpillar version. Uh, we spoke about this in length in the last video um, and it's good to have an understanding of what the numbers mean. Um, and it is, with Zetter, it is very, very straightforward. So moving on to the styling then of the tractors. So Zetter by Pin and Farina. So in 2015, um, at the Agri Technica exhibition in Hanover, Zetter introduced the design concept of Zetter by Pin, Pin and Farina. The concept was applied to all products and model ranges across the Zetter brand. The BBC C said of the Italian Pin and Farina studio, that is the most sexy tractor in the world. Now make of that what you want. But Pinfrina is famous for making incredibly beautiful cars. So anyone who, you know, when you look at some of the Alfa Romeo models um, that Pinfrina have styled, they're stunning machines. And, you know, it is one of the top styling, um, industrial styling companies in the world. So for what they do. Um, but, and you have to admit that a lot of the new Zetters, they are a fantastic uh, looking machine. They are very, very smart very well designed um design look machine but then they have to be these days because for some you know, not for some reason but you know people do take looks of a tractor into consideration when they're buying it if someone doesn't like the look of it they're not going to buy it regardless of the price or the fuel efficiency i know a lot of those things are huge but um people do actually like their tractors to look well you know um so moving on then so Engine and components. So Zetter also produces and sells individual engines and tractor components. So four cylinder Zetter engines meet required emission standards, including the currently strictest um, stage five. It offers a service and service parts, which are supplied throughout the world. 
The Zetter stock currently includes over 20,000 original parts for all types of Zetter tractors, ranging from the Unified Series 1, 2 and 3 to the current models. Thus, even tractors aged over 40 years have a full service support. Zetter also produces original oils under its own brand, so under its own Zetter brand. So if you see a can of oil with Zetter on it, it's actually produced by themselves. It's not... um, customer supplied oil like 90% or 95% of other manufacturers across the world would have including cars and heavy you know heavy in, in the heavy industry. Zetter also produces two ranges of front end loaders within the Zetter system so the front end loaders mark ZL and ZX differ in size and lifting force with both being compatible with all Zetter tractors. Uh, the Zetter Gallery then, for anyone that's interested, on the 13th of June 2013 saw the ceremonial opening of the Zetter Museum called the Zetter Gallery. The museum displayed tractors from the legendary Z25 up to the most current crystal models, um, as well as the prototype of the forthcoming Zetter by Pinfrey the tractors. Part of the museum is also a fan shop. Um, another um, another uh, deal I suppose that they were involved in a commercial deal they were involved in uh, down through the years was actually with John Deere as well um, so in 1993 Zetter actually executed a contract with the John Deere company on the supply of low load but high quality tractors for the Latin American markets based on an agreement with John Deere that Zetter had to leave all South American markets this cooperation followed the development of the late 1960s when the Zetter when Zetter commenced the same cooperation, but for political reasons, only for a very short time. In the years 1993 to 1996, in the course of the effectiveness period of the contract, 6,500 tractors were sold. Assembly was also located in the assembly plant of John Deere in Mexico. Now, the cynical among you would say that was John Deere's way of basically taking over Zetter for the South American market um, when they, you know, the deal was that you know, we're, we're making them, brand them John Deere, but every other Zetter has to be, you know, pretty much gone out of this country. Um, so, you know, was it slight tactics for John Deere? Probably was, you know, it's just huge corporations using their muscle and their might to, uh, as we've seen with lots of other manufacturers uh, down through the years, and John Deere are pretty famous for it now, I have to admit. Um, so look, at that's it, that's Zetter. Uh, it's just a short video, just a quick look through the... Um, the, the history of what's been going on over the last few years. Um, anyone that, you know, has one or is driving one or owns one or works in one, if you're working in a dealership or something, please give us a shout. Let us know what you think of them. And uh, especially with reliability wise issues that you might have with them. Um, and of course, how much you love them. Because after my last set of video, the amount of comments were just unbelievable. I don't think there was one negative comment um on the hundreds of comments that were left on the zetter uh especially the crystal um so that's it that's it uh hope everyone's enjoying the summer um i will of course be back next week uh for all you massey ferguson fans um keep an eye out there's a, a, a big one coming next weekend for all you massey fans okay take care and i'll see everybody next week